In reviewing BenQ SW270C, I get a lot of questions from different photographers and different creatives from around the world of which monitor should I choose because the SW270C right behind me here is technically an upgraded model of the SW2700PT, which was their first hardware calibrated display. Both of these displays are hardware calibration capable and they also come with a preset mode from the factory. However, this video, what I like to do is go over five new features that I think it's worthwhile looking at the SW270C. There is a price point difference, but I think that if you are going to use any of these five features, that it is something that you want to consider. So let's jump into the video. I'm Art Suwensang, I'm a BenQ brand ambassador, and let's take a look at this display. So starting right out, the first thing you're going to notice is the design. Now obviously we're not buying expensive hardware calibrated display necessarily for the design element of the display. However, we do have to consider as well that it does enhance the way how our workspace look. It does make our workspace look differently depending on the design object we put in there. So the SW2700PT, the first generation here, you will see that there is a bezel all the way around it. Not that this bezel is a bad thing, the panel is still of really great quality. However, when you jump into the SW2700 C, you're going to notice that this display takes the cue from all the previous BenQ updates that they have done and they have introduced this new thing called Infinity Edge Display and I love this. I, I just like looking at the display. You can see just your pictures being immersed in what you're doing and not so much the you know black line around the display itself. So those are some of the things to consider if you're looking between these two models. Continuing on the physical appearance of the display, when you look at these two panel up close, especially from the side, you're going to notice that these two panel has a slightly different coating to them. I'm not necessarily saying that one is better than the other, but because there is a change in the panel that is being used on the inside, the coating on the front actually has to change a little bit as well. The other thing too about the these two panels itself is that it can still rotate like so. It can still rotate vertical if you want to do so. So you can set these and both of these have the same ergonomics in terms of being able to rotate verticals and so forth. Now the thing though that you may want to note is that if you need a lot more movement on the display itself, the SW270C because of the upgraded stand can do a little bit more things meaning that first of all it can go higher which means that the moment you rotate it to go to go into vertical or portrait mode, you don't get the corners scratching the bottom of the base anymore, which is something that I find really useful and is really nice to have, the fact that they actually did consider this, because the other one on the SW2700PT, what you have to do is angle the screen out a little bit in order for it not to scratch the base. So we'll bring this down here. The other thing too, going by base of the physical appearance is that the SW270C has a brand new redesigned shading hood mounting system. Now it has a shading hood to help block stray light from coming in and decrease the contrast of the picture which you know enhances the editing experience that you will have and making sure that you're seeing truly accurate colors. But what I really like about the SW270C is this. They have a new shading hood mounting system that's an interlocking mechanism where there's nothing protruding out from the display. Very different from the first generation where we have these hooks there. Now these hooks didn't stay in BenQ design language for very long. It only showed up in this very first hardware calibrated panel and then all the other iterations or all the other models they have upgraded to this interlocking mechanism which I like much better. But another thing too is that you can see that there's like soft velcro on top of here in order to mount the shading hood to which I genuinely think that the new interlocking mechanism is much better. Now the other thing too is that if you're going to use your screen in vertical orientation or portrait mode, one of the really nice things about this new interlocking mechanism is that when you rotate the screen vertical, you can actually use a shading hood in the vertical orientation as well, something that you cannot do with the SW2700PT because of these interlocking mechanisms. So if you use a lot of vertical mode, that's something to think about. One last thing about the physical appearance between these two display, other than just the way how they're designed, is that the hockey puck is different. So the SW2700PT came with the first generation hockey puck and this was the really first generation where you can kind of see chrome here. In their reiteration of the hockey puck itself, you know, which the buttons and everything are still the same in the other BenQ display, they have changes so that the casing is actually matte black so it doesn't reflect any colors. 
So in SCBU-270C, BenQ has introduced the second generation hockey puck. Now if you can kind of see here, the second generation hockey puck is a total redesign, is very different from the first generation. Gone are many of the buttons that were there to move either left, right, up, down in the first generation. In this second generation, they replaced the center core here with a dial. And with this dial, you can set it so that it will change brightness, contrast, or you can even do the volume. In this case, if your computer can output the volume to the display, there's a function that you can set that to. In addition to this is that there's an extra added function button that's added to the second generation hockey puck. Now this extra added function button is really cool because you can go in and program it to whatever you like to do. By default, it is set to rotate between different input modes. However, you can go and change it to so that it will change between different color modes as well. So there's a lot of options you can set that to. That is the physical appearance and what you can see from the outside of the panel itself. Now let's go on and get into the inside of it. And no, I'm not going to take the display apart and show you what it looks like on the inside, but good try though. But anyhow, let's talk about the inside of it a little bit. So the panel itself, these two displays are the same in terms of resolution. They can produce 2560 by 1440 resolution, which is a 2K resolution which is you know a great display i love 2k like i mentioned in my review video of the sw series of display especially the sw270c is that a 2k display still has a special place in my heart because it's one of those displays you can buy you can plug it in you don't need to worry about upgrading your computer making sure that your video card can drive 4k granted if you brought a computer or if you purchased a computer within the past two or three years or so most of the time your computer will be able to drive 4k without any issue but the other thing that comes with 4K and the usage of 4K is that many times you will run into problem of the text being small and you need to use scaling. So a 2K panel is like a perfect solution for that. If you don't need 4K, 2K is perfect for that reason. And I love 2K for that. But beyond just a 2K part, we need to talk about the, the computer inside the panel itself. And now we're going to talk about the LUT, the lookup table. Now the lookup table is the color reference table that the display use in the hardware part of the display to calibrate and adjust the color to make sure that you're seeing good and true accurate colors. What changes between these two is that the SW2700PT, their very first generation, and many of the other SW series of display as well, has a 14-bit LUT, a 14-bit lookup table. Now, by all means, a 14-bit LUT is no slouch. It's a great lookup table. That's talk, we're talking about trillions of colors here, which is really great. Now, the SW270C is BenQ first SW series of display that they have released with a 16-bit LUT. Now we're talking between going from a 14 to 16-bit. You may not think that that's a lot of colors, but we're still talking billions or trillion more colors here that this display can show. And personally for me, if I have the opportunity to pick between a slightly larger color space, I would always try to go for the slightly larger color space, especially when I'm editing, when I'm printing my photos and so forth. It's just really nice to have. So that's something to consider as well, a 14-bit LUT versus a 16-bit LUT. That's another difference between these two displays. One of the many things I like about BenQ is that they really listen to your customer feedback and implement the changes in the display. The main comment that customers are giving about the SCB2700PT is that the color is great. However, the color uniformity throughout the display and the brightness uniformity is not quite as good. So what BenQ has done is actually gone back to the table and for the SW270C, what they have done is a couple things. First of all, they have upgraded to an even higher quality panel. That means you're gonna get a better quality panel right out of box. Not only that, what BenQ has also done there is introduce a second generation uniformity technology. What does that really mean? It means that this panel has to go through a much more rigorous test and much more rigorous calibration before it even leaves the factory floor. What essentially what BenQ has done is that they have divided this display, this panel into multiple different grids and all those different grids are individually calibrated. And then with the hardware computer inside, they are blended together so that you don't see like weird colors side by side, but essentially if you ever run a uniformity test between these two panels, you will see the big difference between the two that many times this one won't show as good of a result, but this display, the SW270C, 
the uniformity result, it's spectacular. So that's another great thing about it. What this really means to the users is this. Number one, because of the upgraded panel, you're gonna see white that's actually whiter, that doesn't show any color cast. You're gonna see you know, grays that are actually true or gray. But not only that, when you move a picture or you're editing the pictures and around the edges and so forth of a screen or on the side of it, you're gonna see much more accurate colors and the colors that matches exactly what's in the center of the display. So those are a couple things that you want to think about. Another difference between these two display internally is the added USB Type-C connection on the BenQ SW270C. What I like about the USB Type-C is that if you have any modern laptop or any Apple laptop built from year 2016 forward, you only need one cable to do everything. And when I say one cable is that this display also has a new technology called power delivery built into it. This display will provide 60 watt of power to your laptop, which is really great. I have been testing this display with my 2018 MacBook Pro 15 inch, which takes a lot of power. And what I've found out so far is that one singular cable, the 60 watt power supply, will power my laptop just fine. So essentially one cable will pretty much do everything for you in this case. It will power your laptop. It will carry the display signal to bring the pictures to the display. It will also handle all the IOs, input, output. So what that does as well is that all the BenQ SW series come with two USB Type-A ports on the side and an SD card slot. That one cable will handle it all, which makes it very easy. Essentially, that one single cable kind of makes this display almost like a dock for your laptop in a way. So that's very different in contrast to the SW 2700PT. Now obviously this one you will have to plug in more cables to it because back then when this display was released, USB Type-C wasn't really around. But that's the nice thing about the new panel too, is that if you have any modern laptop or if you're using this in the studio as a reference display in your primary work on the road or laptop, then this may be one that you want to consider because once you come back to the studio, you no longer have to plug in so many different cables and the power brick. You just need one cable from the display to your laptop and you're set. You can just get working right away. One last difference between these two display is the preset color mode. The BenQ SW270C has the added M-Book color mode. So for the M-Book color mode, if you are an Apple laptop user or any Apple with built-in display users, you will notice that the color space is calibrated and tuned a little differently than any other display out there in the market. They're greatly tuned, however, when you try to set Adobe RGB, sRGB, many times the color wouldn't match. So if you just want to use the BenQ SW270C right on a box, you can set the preset color mode to MBook. And what BenQ has done there is mimic the color on the display so that it would matches almost perfectly with your built-in Apple internal display. So if you're using that display as an extension to your laptop, you're good, you're pretty much set. Now I still recommend that you go in and do a custom profile on the display here. This way you can have a profile that's specifically matching to the output of your laptop and to this hardware calibrated display. However, if you're not gonna do that, MBook is a really great color mode for you to consider. So these are the differences between these two panels, the SW2700PT and the SW270C. Resolution-wise, they are the same, but BenQ have made a lot of great improvement to them. So if you're on the fence between the two, I hope that this video have helps to answer your questions that you have and clarify a lot of the differences between the two models. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment below. Please don't forget to like and subscribe my video and hit the notification bell so that you will be updated when I release a new video. And until next video, artist right.